And firstly, this is just for anybody that wants to say that I don't appreciate the original Toho Godzilla. It's just because I like the American one, too. Right? You know, I bought this thing as a kid. I've had it forever. Somewhere around here, I have Godzilla's Revenge, too. But that one... That one just got awful. It's like Barney meets Godzilla or something. It's terrible. Um, I had several others on VHS, but I don't have a VCR anymore. But I did have, you know, Godzilla vs. Mothra, Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, Godzilla vs. Megalon, and Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla. Oh, and Godzilla vs. Biollante, too. Um, and I also remember renting Godzilla 1985 as a kid. So I've seen plenty of the uh, Toho Godzillas when I was younger. Godzilla 2000 was my first Japanese Godzilla that I've ever seen. In fact... However, the movie that preceded this cartoon was the first Godzilla that I was introduced to when I was just six or seven years old. And honestly, I've only seen like two episodes of this cartoon when I was a kid. I thought it was kind of cool, but you know, I didn't really get to see much more of them, sadly. And then they eventually made their way to YouTube in low quality, but they did eventually make their way to YouTube, and I was kind of blown away by how the series was actually pretty fun. Every single episode has some kind of kaiju fight where Godzilla acts mostly as the muscle for the Heat Team. Heat Team, you know, the people, the, the human characters seem to do most of the work. It's just Godzilla does the muscle of, you know, fighting the kaiju head-on or something. Mm, there's a few other little issues that I have with uh, Godzilla the series. Uh, for example, they reuse sound effects, and when they reuse the roars from different monsters, that can get a little bit boring and, and, re and just repetitive and turn me off a little bit. I'm also not fond on how they didn't do much of their homework when they were talking about science things. Um, you know, an iguana and a veranded like a Komodo dragon are not in the same genus, okay? I don't care what they wanted to, you know, I don't care if they wanted to make Godzilla besties with Komodo Thorax, okay? They're not in the same genus. They're only in the same order, in fact. And sometimes the animation can be a little bit awkward looking. You know, it's like they didn't have enough time to draw out all of these things, you know, the characters and the monsters. Because sometimes there's some uh, animation where Godzilla just looks god-awful. Like, they, they were never able to stay on model or something like that. I don't know why. Maybe they just didn't have the time to do it. I don't know. And some of the human characters can be a little bit annoying, too. Um, Mendel, for an example, is always just bitching and moaning, and that gets kind of annoying at times. Guys, wouldn't we be happier in a nice hotel? A warm, safe, doors at lock hotel? <laughs> And then you have the Randy character, which, you know, he's also a bit obnoxious as well. Always always just loud and, and yelling and things. Yeah! Give him one for me, Mr. G! But what other uh, kids cartoon really can you say has, you know, love interests? There's a few, but not many. You know, and, and many of them don't go as complicated as what you see in this series where... You know, they have to choose between, you know, two people have to choose between, you know, their relationship or their job, and it's always kind of, you know, getting in the way of, 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 each, of the, both the career and the relationship at times. All right, there's only a few other car kids' cartoons that I can think of that have relationships that are that complicated. You know, Gargoyles, I think, is one. Avatar is another. And I can't think of many more at the moment. And as for Godzilla himself, well, everything that the Toho fanboys hated about the 98 Godzilla, the fact that he didn't have his atomic fire and he could die from missiles, well, they took that out from this one. He's been hit by conventional missiles, and he survived. In fact, he's even been hit by alien weapons and survived those, too. He got knocked down, occasionally knocked out from them, but no serious injury came to him. And yes, he has his atomic fire in a distinct green color in this series. The atomic fire I personally calculated to be about 200,000 PSI, and because he was able to create a supercell in one episode, 
Um, others have calculated that his atomic fire has to be at least 30 billion degrees. That's hotter than what the Toho Godzilla's fire is. But that's if you want to try to apply real-world logic to cartoons. So, yeah, I don't know. His roar sounds a lot closer to the Toho Godzilla's than what it did in any of the 98 movie. Um, you know, it's, it's higher pitch and there's a little bit more grit to it. And it sounds, you know, it sounds pretty good, pretty cool. Plus, they gave him some new abilities, like the ability to burrow really fast. And, of course, he still has his speed, but he's also used his spikes before as a weapon. Um, in the episode Talking Trash, he used them to actually cut one of the kaiju he was fighting while running really fast. And if you look on the back of this uh, case, I don't know if my camera will be able to focus in on it, but it basically says uh, that Godzilla and its character des design are trademarks of Toho Koho LTT 1998 blah blah blah. And this DVD was released in 2014. That means that, legally at least, this character is still Godzilla. You can call him whatever you want, but legally... He's still Godzilla, and that goes for this. And this is the same goes for the uh, '98 movie, by the way. Now, as for the monsters that Godzilla fights, the designs of them, for the most part, just look like any other sort of generic monster you'd find in a kids' cartoon. So you could say that this is the American Godzilla fighting American monsters, and yeah, it makes sense when you think about it that way. Um, my favorite ones being Cyber Godzilla from the Monster Wars trilogy. We'll talk about that later. Um, he's basically the first Godzilla, but with cybernetic implants, missiles, and he has a blue atomic fire. <clears throat> we also have the Robo Yeti from Competition, which uh, is very much like Mecha Godzilla in that it has missiles and uh, it has wires that shoot lightning, basically, <laughs> and zap the hell out of their opponent. And it also knows martial arts, which is pretty. Pretty cool. It gave a pretty badass battle. Um, my other favorite would be the Crackler from What Dreams May Come. Um, it's just, it's another electric-based uh, enemy of Godzilla's, but it seems to be generated by a dream or something, which is interesting. My favorite episodes of this entire series are probably the Leviathan and Monster Wars uh, story arc good four episode uh, story arc there. Basically Godzilla destroy all monsters or final wars if you will but in the cartoon version with the American Godzilla. Um, you know telepathic aliens come down they take control of the monsters and some people um, and they make the monsters destroy the cities in order to deplete the military's uh, weapons so that the invasion force can come in and turn humans into slaves and Put them into the collective, like the Borg from Star Trek or something like that. Um, that was it was pretty fun. Plus, we got to see Godzilla and Cyber Godzilla battle, and uh, yeah, that was pretty cool. One of the most violent battles of the entire series, in my opinion. Um, it was short-lived, sadly, but it was pretty, pretty, pretty brutal battle. Um, another episode would probably be Talking Trash. That's one of my favorites. Where they have to fight a. Uh, some kind of trash-eating nanobot kaiju or something. Um, I, one of the reasons it's probably my favorite is because it was the one that I saw when I was a kid. And then the one that I remember the most, you know. Um, plus it has some really cool shots in it too, and, and, and just stuff like that. Another one of my favorite episodes would probably be the Juggernaut, because it has a kaiju in there that's very much like the um, thing from Akira. It just consumes more and more technology, which is really cool, and just because this big blob of just nothing and Better technology stuff. Ever. First thing, I, the first time I was introduced to was something like that was actually in South Park. I, I do, but I did see the anime, and I, I, I think it's pretty cool. But for the most part, I think that uh, Godzilla started off the strongest with its first season. You know, I had the episode Bird of Paradise, for an example, which. It's basically their version of Rodan, but it's, you know, them fighting the Quetzodactyl or whatever, however you pronounce it. You know, just a, a, a bird that comes out of a volcano, pretty much, and shoots fire, and... That, that's basically Rodan. 
You know, the original Godzilla cartoon had that too. You know. So, but the later episodes aren't bad. They're just not as strong, I think, as a lot of the uh, earlier episodes of the series. <clears throat> I just wish that it would would have gone on longer. You know, we only got 40 episodes. Two of them were unaired, but you can see them in this DVD. I'll put the link to buy this DVD in the description. Um, it's only eight bucks. You can get it on Amazon. It comes within like a couple of weeks or so, if you, you know, <clears throat> or you could get it quicker than that if you want to pay extra. <clears throat> one of the unaired episodes, however, I'm gonna warn you: Taurus Trap. For one, it's sort of a boring filler episode, in my opinion, and for two, the audio and video are out of sync. Guidance back to shore. Over. Don't bother them, Pumpkin. I can find our way. I have it on my YouTube with the video and audio more or less uh, in sync, at least to the point where it's watchable. But, yeah, on the DVD, it's really bad, like a, a three, three or four second lag or something, and it's, yeah, it's terrible. Um, so, yeah, that's my overall um, thoughts on this Godzilla uh, cartoon series. I'd recommend it to any kaiju fan, at least. To any casual watcher, nah, maybe not. I mean, it's not bad, it's just if you're not really into Godzilla, you're probably not going to care much for this series. <clears throat>